and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSL Com TV StarCraft 2 League or Global StarCraft 2 League, whichever you prefer to have the G stand for. This is the up and down matches, and we are going to be moving into Game 3. Man, yeah. Game 2 was just fantastic. Sorry you guys missed it during that break. It was the double proxy rush, and no, I'm just kidding. Double it's just proxy take hatchery versus... Exactly. <laughs> It's just gonna. Um, <laughs> it's gonna take so long to get uh, Zeno's computer set up that we're actually just gonna skip to match number three, yeah. game number three, and then we'll go back and play uh, Zeno versus um, Gumiho at a yeah. later time. Since uh, Genius was already set up and Sage was already preparing and he's now set up, we're just gonna skip into going into yet another PVP. It's gonna be Genius versus Sage. Yep. And the Gome Wizard's back in the background. He's like summoning with all his might to bring <laughs> the new computer for Zeno, but it could take some time. It could take a while, indeed, but he is on it, and hopefully we'll have a nice macroy Protoss versus Protoss. Yeah. Take a while, give him some time to set up Xenio's computer. Have our a nice, first exciting PvP match. was on dual site. Now this one is going to be on Crossfire. Crossfire, a map where Colossi are very strong. We saw it last time Genius played PvP on this map. He actually went for speed immortal drops, which were not actually very effective, and he played against none other than Sage on this very oh, same map. Oh yes! And so we're gonna have a rematch you're here right, on you're Crossfire, right. and I don't think we're gonna see immortal drops, but what we did see was Genius making a very faster switch to Colossi, and that's how he was able to come out on top against Sage. We'll see if he can do it again here yep. at the GSL up and down matches. The map is loaded. Are you ready, Moltrap? I am ready indeed. I was born ready. Came out of my mother's womb thinking, I want to watch Protoss vs. Protoss. <laughs> All right, I'm here we finally going to get my wish. Here we go. <laughs> I came out of my mother's womb ready to play Protoss, man. <laughs> Done that all my life. <laughs> and this guy came straight out of the beta, definitely ready to play StarCraft 2. He is. And we be genius. Yep, our BlizzCon champion. BlizzCon champion, and for another uh, five days. Yeah. There he is. Very strong player early on in StarCraft 2. And here is his opponent, an up and comer. And it's Puso Sage. Up and comer who is He's a fan favorite and an a fan favorite, favorite and a Tosis favorite, but not a statistical favorite. No. The not numbers in this case. say that Sage is going down in this game. That's what they do say indeed. Sage checking his base for proxies. Gotta be careful, man. You never know when a genius is gonna do something really smart. <laughs> it's true. The smarter choice of course in this case is to make a gateway at a normal timing and take an assimilator. Inside of one's own base. I think I think Sage started everything a probe earlier though. Cause he, his gateway and his and his assimilator finished a little bit earlier and I saw him at fourteen and fifteen. So not really too big of a deal, but uh, sometimes it makes a little bit of a difference. Yeah, the gateway's finishing within a second he chose the assimilator done uh, much quicker for uh, Sage, however, although he did not put his probes in it immediately, so actually they're both at the exact same <laughs> amount of gas. There you go. Giving you guys all the technical info on the exact build doors here. Well, we're probably going to see the similar thing to last game where both players didn't really reveal what they're going to go for until after they've got a stock route to chase the enemy probe away. Sage uh, did get his second gas much faster than Genius. In fact, he's already mining from where Genius is only taking a second gas right now. So a super early second gas for Sage and he started his second gateway. He's actually doing a build order that um, is called the Three Stalker Rush, most likely. First Stalker coming out here, he's going to Chrono Boost it. He's actually Chrono Boosted his Warp Gate research instead, interesting. And uh, it's a common PvP build, you get your gateway, and you get a second gateway after your core, and then you Chrono Boost out three Stalkers. But in this case, Sage is actually Chrono Boosting his Warp Gate research, not Chrono Boosting the Stalkers, but when you get those three Stalkers out, you use them to control the area around your natural, make sure there are no pylons, kill any units your opponent might be using in the middle of the map, because three stalkers beat a zealot, a stalker, and a probe, which is what you often see. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, even if they do have two stalkers out a little bit after that, then 
So obviously, micro against that. If they have the zealot, you can just micro away from the zealot. Now, Genius has made a robotics facility off of just one gate. It's probably going to add some additional gateways just to be safe. I'm really curious to see what we're going to see from Sage, though. He has not yet shown anything. He's got a pro poise to take a fast Nexus. We may, in fact, see that. Oh, so yeah. it's becoming more popular. But it's very difficult to pull off, especially on a map like this one. And well, he does take the Nexus. It's interesting because he showed the two gateways to Genius. Very true. So he showed him those gateways. And so he's thinking, all right, well, Genius now thinks I'm going to three Stalker Rush. Or Genius at least thinks I'm going to be going for a more aggressive build. So now that he's no longer here, I'm going to take that Nexus that he won't expect me to take. And also, keep in mind, uh, Genius was able to see the super fast second gas, I believe. I, I believe yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, he was able to see that. So because he was able to see that second gas, he's going to think that's why he made his robo so quickly. He was like, well, even though my second gas is later, I can actually skip a sentry here and just make my robo because I know you're not going to forgate me. You're not putting a lot of real pressure on yeah. me early. So now he's just going to kind of sit back tech up. He's making it immortal right now as he adds another gateway. He's probably going to push out and be a little bit aggressive, but Sage may have enough to hold. He's actually adding a robotic support bay right now as well, and we're probably going to see Genius actually go for a two Colossus timing attack. It's a really good map for that. You can use that high ground right outside the natural to bring your Colossi back up so you can keep poking the Nexus and running back up there and uh, continue that type of pressure. I think that's what we're going to see. Yep, and Genius is Observer, that's what they're called. Uh, just arrives and scouts that expansion from Sage so he knows exactly what's going on. And yeah, if he just gets two really quick Colossi and moves across, I don't think Sage will quite have been able to make use of that expansion enough. It's going to be a little bit close because Sage is starting to mine from that expansion. Yeah, he is uh, making an Observer right now. He's going to want to start an Immortal immediately. He has gone up to four gates as well, so that's going to be really helpful in holding this. And Immortals now with their new range are going to a little bit better against Colossi, but if Genius makes only Zealots and Colossi and then attacks, it's going to be really easy for him to punish Sage for what he's done here. Sage actually making a Twilight Council now. It does start an Immortal as well. Huh. Sage is kind of going a couple different techs. He's getting that Immortal out, but also going for the Twilight Council. Now, he... Actually, does Sage know anything about what Genius's build? Is he? Is he... Now he actually has no idea. He has idea no idea if he has Robotech or anything like that. That's why so. he had to make that observer before the Immortal. And he's going to come in here. He's going to see the Colossus. He's going to see the Chrono Boost on that uh, Robotics. And he's going to actually know immediately, oh no, this is actually going to be so difficult to hold. Now, in the in, we're getting a shot of the other base, but in the main base now of Genius, Sage has actually seen everything with that observer. He did not, however, see the units moving out. So he only saw the tech, saw the robotic support base, saw the Chrono Boost on the Robo. And he knows something is coming, and look at how few units he has. This is going to be so oh, wow. difficult. He has, he has almost no units, does he? Okay, there's a couple more Stalkers in the middle of the map. They all almost get caught off guard. That would have been almost the end for Sage if he'd lost those two Stalkers aside from the others. But the second Colossus is out. He's, He's rallying it forward to the rest of his... Troops and whoa, Sage going for a warp prism. He's going to use that warp prism to try to drop his colossi behind the colossi, or drop his uh, immortals rather behind the colossi. It's not going to be easy. And Genius can control this engagement with his force fields right now because Sage has nothing to deal with those. Yeah. And look at this positioning though by Sage. He's actually making it so that Genius does not want to engage. He can't engage up that ramp without using his colossi to step on the force fields. And when that happens, of course, the immortals are going to do a lot of damage to the colossus. Yep, so Genius is actually going to go around. There are those Immortals in that Warp Prism. Yeah, Genius, like you're saying, is going to go around to the other side, and that Warp Prism is trying to move into place here. It's going to be so hard for Sage to hold this. Oh, this Can he do be it? Tough. He's got a significant amount of Stalkers, but those Colossi are going to eat through them very quickly. He's, oh, he goes to the back with the Immortals. He's going to take out the Pylon. Not quite able to get that Pylon. But he does have the high ground. He can take out some Stalkers. Wow, gets one Stalker and lifts up, taking no real damage to those units. He's going to attack forward here. He's got a pretty oh. good concave. The Immortal doing damage to the Colossus. But it looks like Genius may have too much. His Zealots are running past everything here. The Immortals dropped again on top of the Colossi. But the Zealots alone are doing enough damage, I think, to kill Sage here. Oh, wow. Very good control with those Immortals from Sage. But he's just not able to hold off. He does drop them out. Finally loses the Immortals and Genius. Able to overrun him. Sage, GG's.
Yeah, and that just shows that standard play sometimes can win out. Genius uh, just made two Colossal and attacked exactly as I predicted. And yep. You see that Nexus? That's what you do, man. You make two Colossal and attack. He didn't even need range. He didn't even need it. And as you guys saw, the Zealots were actually the real damage dealers there. Even though the Immortals were really cute, they dropped down damage to Colossae. Genius had to micro the back, they didn't participate that much, but the Zealots alone were just enough to really take that game. Yeah, it was it was almost a, almost a good idea, because uh, Genius didn't have any Stalkers to actually attack the Warp Prism, so the Warp Prism could just fly around and kind of do whatever it wanted. And yeah, he was had really good control with the Immortals, dropping him out, picking him back up again, getting some shots off on... The Colossi, he actually took out one of the Colossi, forced it to run around and not take shots for a while because of that. But just too much damage that being dealt. The Zealots backed him into a corner. He got hit by the Colossus shots with all of his stalkers. Just didn't have enough there. One of the riskiest expansions I've ever seen to do on a map like this. And one of the other decisions he made that we didn't really talk about is he made a Twilight Council. Was not able to use it, however. Yeah, um, what was with the Twilight Council? You want to use a Twilight Council to get Blink and be more mobile, and he didn't yet know what Genius was doing. He didn't know if Genius had an expansion, he didn't know if he was going Robotech, he didn't That's know if Genius true. was also going Blink Tech. That's true. Because if he's also going Blink Tech, then he needs his own Blink eventually as well. So as soon as he got into his base, he was like, well, now I just can't use this Twilight Council. And that was just that. Yeah. No, yeah, you're, you're right. It was kind of like a thing where he's like, all right, well, I'm going to get this Twilight Council and then decide what to do with it once I see what he's in, what he has. And then once he saw what he has, he said, oh, I, I've found out that I can't use this Twilight Council, really. It's going to be too slow to get Blink. Maybe if he'd seen uh, Twilight Council tech in, you know, if he was going for Blink, he might have gone for a Dark Shrine or something like that. So that was kind of a cool idea to, like, send out the Observer to Scout and then be like, all right, well, based on what I see, I'll either get Blink or Dark Templar or something like that. But, you know what? Big timing attack from Genius. Wolves him over. Sage is now 0-1. Genius is now 1-1. Losing the first game against um, Puzzle. And then technically winning the third game. Even though we played the third game before the second game. But here we go. Game 2 is going to be starting here yeah. very soon. Finally, Zinio. Gumio versus Zinio. Zinio versus Gumio. The towel Terran. You guys just saw him wipe his hands with that same towel. He's now placed it over his mouse. You guys can see a little glimpse of it right next to the white part of match 2 there. There it is. It's the towel Terran. So weird. So cool, man. It is It's kind of cool, I guess, but I, it seems like it wouldn't actually help. Like, for me, I feel like it in the way and get it on my mouse and make it harder for me to move. But we're going to see if the towel Terran can triumph here in just a second. GSL up and down matches. Got to start game number two.